Hello there, and this is the paper three walkthrough uh, for A level at Excel Geography. First off, what we're going to do is just go through and have a look at what paper three looks like and its resource booklet, just to get a feel for the exam paper. And then we're going to go on to look at some general ideas, hints, tips, uh, and how to approach paper three. And then we'll look at the different types of exam questions. So, first off, as you can see in front of us, this is paper three. Um, we've got an exam that's worth two hours, 15 minutes here. So it's exactly the same uh, in terms of its length as paper one and two. But the major difference here is that this paper is actually only worth 70 marks overall, uh, as opposed to paper one and two, which is 105 marks each. And advice here straight away from the exam board is that you should be spending the first 15 minutes reading the resource booklet. Can I ask that all students, uh, paper one through paper three, you do read this information on the front. Um, there are, it's clearly important information. Um, another one just to double check here and to point out is that any calculations much, must show all stages of working out and a clear answer. Make it obvious, uh, you get marks for the working out and clearly the examiner needs to know what your answer is um, and calculators are allowed on this paper. Moving on, what we'll find is the first three questions, the six questions overall, are explain questions. So here is our command word. And again, we should always identify the command word uh, in each question. So we've got an explain question, which is worth four marks. And we always should be identifying how many marks the questions are worth. And the first three questions are going to be those shorter answer questions. So the first questions and explain here. Second question is uh, two calculate questions. So we've got a two marker and we've got a two marker and they are calculate. I can see the command word calculate and I can see the command word calculate. So we then move on to our third question here and it's another explain and it's in the low tariff question with four marks. So the first three questions are question one, four marker. Question 2A is a four marker split into two on this paper. And then we go on to 2B, which is basically the third question on the paper, which is a four marker. So basically we've got three four markers to begin with. Moving on to question three here, we have an analyzed question and we're being asked now to actually use specific resources for example, resource four in the resource booklet. And these analyzed questions are worth eight marks. And we don't find this on anything except for paper three. Question four, again, telling us to study certain resources, figure five and six, and is again an analyzed question, and it is also worth eight marks. So we've got two eight markers in the middle of the paper. And then we move on to our evaluate questions which is question five 18 marks and then moving on from that our last question on the paper question six and again evaluate 24 marker so this paper has six questions although there are seven all together because question two is broken down into 2a and 2b we're basically going four marker four marker four marker then we have two eight markers and we have an 18 marker and a 24 marker. So six overall questions, except we've got two A and two B making it seven questions overall. Now this paper is a resource-based paper, which means that we have a very lengthy resource booklet. So here it is, it's split into sections. You can see that we've got section A at the top here, and we have a lot of information, a lot of graphicacy here, very detailed and more detailed than the resources for paper one and two and we'll go through the last section here which is, which is section d so we have four sections overall okay so that's just generally a quick flick through the actual papers so you know what they look like and then let's actually move on to some kind of tips hints how to actually approach this and just some general background to this paper so first off <clears throat> we 
and we've got the general overview from the specification here. I've already mentioned that we've got a two hour, 15 minute exam. It is worth 20% of your actual qualification. That's 30% paper one, 30% paper two, 20% paper three, 20% your independent investigation, um, otherwise known as your NEA, your non-examined assessment, and it's worth 70 marks. Content overview. So the specification contains three synoptic themes. All synoptic means is that you can make the links between different subject knowledge and throughout uh, the specification and throughout the textbooks, revision guides and so forth, they refer to three synoptic themes. These themes are players, uh, the attitudes of said players and the actions that their attitudes inform. And then the third theme is futures and uncertainties. You will have come across all three of these because every topic has these embedded within them, within the specification and the lessons designed by your teachers um, follow that specification. So these have been um, these have been taught within the embedded subject knowledge of lessons uh, week to week. Now the synoptic investigation will be based on a geographical issue within a place-based context. What does that mean? Basically your paper will be um, placed somewhere in the world. It could be a country or a region. Uh, so far, uh, we've had a city, state I, and country, i.e. Singapore. We've had an area of Africa and we've also had Southeast Asia. So it could be a country, it could be a region. Um, it will link to the three synoptic themes above. This path, players, attitudes and futures and it will be rooted in two or more compulsory content areas. And then if we look at the assessment overview, it tells you that the resource booklet will contain information about the geographical issue mentioned above. Um, all questions in the examination draw synoptically on knowledge and understanding from the compulsory content. And then just mentioned below, and we've already had a look at this, there'll be two eight markers, an 80 marker and a 24 marker. Let's look at the compulsory content. So you've studied five topics that every student has to study. The specification does give teachers some choice in what topics we can teach, but every teacher has to teach these five. So we've got tectonic processes and hazards, globalization, the water cycle, carbon cycle, and superpowers. This exam is testing your knowledge of all five of these uh, core subjects, core topics, and it's your ability to bring together subject knowledge from these five together and apply it to the resource booklet, i.e. you've got a geographical issue in a geographical place. Can you bring what you've learned in two years of lessons from these five topics and apply it to that issue in that place? Quick little overview of assessment objectives here. In geography, there are three assessment objectives. Sorry. We've got AO1, which is basically your ability to demonstrate knowledge and understanding, and AO2, which is to basically to apply that knowledge. Really, in terms of your P structure, this here is your points and it's your evidence. This is your ability to explain, analyze, and discuss significance, how important your points are uh, linking back to your exam question. If we look at paper one, two and three down here, we can see that paper one and two is largely AO1 and AO2 with very, very little AO3. AO3 is your ability to use quantitative and qualitative data. Fieldwork skills applies to the NEA. And you can use quantitative and qualitative to interpret, analyze, and evaluate data and evidence, and then use the data and the evidence you're drawing from that data to make arguments, and then use that to inform and draw your conclusions. And if we look closely at paper three, 8.5%, okay, for paper three is A or three. There are actually 22 marks out of 70 for your use of AO3, i.e. the difference here 
on paper three is that we have a lower proportion of marks for knowledge and understanding, AO1. We have some, quite a few for AO2, but AO3 is high. It's all about doing things with the data. Okay, so using the data to form it and make an analysis, okay, and then bringing it all together, all the sources you've been given to make a case, okay? i.e. come up with an argument and from that argument draw conclusions okay just quick overview in terms of grade boundaries so this is the grade boundaries and you can see here we've got a star 57 marks out of 70 81 percent a is 51 marks which is 73 percent B, we're getting 45 marks, which is 64%. A C is 39 out of 70, 56%. And there should be no one in here for looking at anything below uh, that line. Paper three, higher grade boundaries than paper one and two. Overall, you can see down here that we've got the six questions, seven overall, because we've got 2A, 2B. And to get an A star, you're looking at again three out of four on the four markers you need to be getting sixes out of eight uh, on the eight markers the analysis questions 15 out of 18 and 19 out of 24 on the two evaluate essays and then if we just skip down to the c you're looking at basically half marks on the four markers five out of eight basically on the eight markers and then 11 dropping seven marks here on the 18 marker and then afford and basically a 10 mark drop in the 24 marker to attain a C grade. This year is basically performance. Uh, so this is informed by examinations in the summer, and this is performance across the different questions. What we can see here is that overall, question one to question six, there isn't a massive difference in terms of the average marks students are getting on these um, questions. Question 2A, question five is in green because it's been done better, slightly above the average. Uh, these two here, 2B, four are slightly below the average. So make sure you look carefully on 2B, make sure you look carefully at question four um, and just you know be aware that on average they've been done slightly worse nationally. So. Uh, concentrate carefully on what the question is asking you to do and your use of resources. But overall, it's not like one question is much harder than the others. Okay. This here is just an overview of the different papers. So, so far, the exam board has released two sample assessment materials. One was on the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. The other one was in Singapore. And we've had one exam paper. The thing to note here is that question one have all been explained for markers question 2a has been a calculate with four although singapore was broken into a two plus two we've got 2b explain four 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 and then three and four have both been eight markers analyzed questions five has been evaluate 18 marker and six has been evaluate 24 marker what can we infer from this the likelihood is is that the paper in the summer okay is going to follow this structure uh, last thing to point out is all three have had this evaluate structure or evaluate phrase which is evaluate the view um in this is turned up in question six so basically this is giving you kind of um a structure to follow for the evaluate question remember evaluate questions are arguments so it's basically asking you here do you agree with this view um yes no what other views can you bring into the argument and then use the the view that they've provided you use the other views that you bring in and then at the end come to a judgment okay here's one view here's another view or here's one view multiple different views bring it together make a judgment Okay, this here is just showing us the spread in command words and uh, marks, so i.e. low tariff, three, four, through to higher tariff questions. And the red is paper three. So we can see here that we've got analyzed questions on paper three with eight marks. 
evaluate questions with 18 and 24 marks. There's no assess question on paper three. Okay, we've just got to evaluate and evaluate questions, even though we don't get 18 and 24 markers on paper one and two, um, they are done in a very similar manner to the 20 markers, uh, evaluate questions on paper one and two. Here's just an overview of paper one to paper three, and it's the essay questions. So the mini essays, six markers upwards. And if we just jump to the bottom here, we can see that for paper three, you're gonna have the two, eight markers, which I've already said, analyze questions, and we're gonna have one 80 marker and one 24 marker. The main thing I wanna point out here is the AO3 spread four here for an analyze, six here for 18, evaluate, and eight here for uh, the 24 mark evaluate. Let's get back to the 20 markers on paper one and two, and you'll see that they have no AO3. So the major difference here is you get marks for using the resources. So you must, must, must use the resources in the resource booklet. And the difference is in your P's paragraphs, your evidence is using the resources. So you're literally quoting and lifting information from the resources, and then you're gonna analyze the information you lifted. That's your AO3. While for your evaluate questions for paper one and two, you're gonna use case study knowledge. Not the case really here in paper three, it's the resource booklet information and your application and your analysis of the data you find within it. Okay, so in terms of this paper, you've got two hours, 15 minutes. Now, that's as long as paper one and two, but it's only worth 70 marks. There's 105 marks on paper one and two. So you have time allocated to get your head around the booklet. So what the exam board states and what I'm stating to you is the first thing you should do is to read the resource booklet through from the start to the end and that you've got 15 minutes to read, to digest and to annotate the resource booklet. Do it, do not start answering questions. This paper is about a geographical issue and a place and it's a story. Every single resource links together. It starts small, bit of information about this issue and this plate, and it builds and builds and builds to the end of the story. So to get the big picture, to understand the issue and understand what's happening in this place and trying to link it to what you've been taught in the five compulsory sections, you must read the booklet from start to end. Get the story before you begin answering questions. I then suggest that on your two eight markers, you spend 15 minutes on them each. 18 marker, 30 minutes, 24 marker, 40 minutes. That totals up to 115 minutes. Papers, two hours, 15, so you've got 20 minutes left. That is for the three, four markers, the explain, calculate, explain question, which you should do a mark a minute. So you should get that done in 12 minutes. So you've got a little bit of a leeway there, uh, left over time-wise. What I'd state here is 1530, 40, probably slightly more than you need. I would 100% make sure you clock at the beginning of the exam when 40 minutes is, or when 45 minutes is left in the exam and to start your 24 marker at that point. But you should be planning answers. Okay, so at the side or top of your paper, I should see you planning out your answers to these questions. The exam board have built that in, so you should be doing it. Over here, this is just some information again from the exam board, and you can see they tell you to plan all answers. Break down the question and plan what the answer might be. Focus on what the exam question's asking you to do, i.e. evaluate. For evaluation, you've got to make a judgment, okay? So you have to make a detailed conclusion to get level three and four. 
In terms of being synoptic, you don't need to shoehorn major case studies in. An 1824 marker, you're looking at about three and four sides of paper, respectively. That's more than what's allocated in the resource booklet, so you're going to have to use extra paper. Okay, three synoptic themes have come up, um, and they are P for players, attitudes and actions, A, futures and certainties, uh, F. So basically, we're going to start thinking about path here. Players, uh, basically, who are the different players? So as you go through the resource booklet, start identifying players. Uh, these can be individuals, groups, organizations, and so forth. But the key here is how are they involved in the geographical issue? Okay, and why might some of these players have a greater influence than others on the issue? Attitudes and actions. Uh, why do attitudes to geographical issues vary so greatly? And how does this influence their actions? So basically, um, what is informing uh, what is informing people's attitudes, and how do those attitudes then kind of uh, inform their actions? So, for example, uh, it could be their attitudes on their religious views. So, their religious views uh, could be informing their actions. And then futures and uncertainties, there are contrasting approaches when making decisions about the future. Uh, and that might be, that comes in three different ways. Something called business as usual, priorities towards sustainable strategies and radical alternatives. Whatever choice is made, that can have impact on people and the environment. Um, and no matter what decisions made, there's always going to be uncertainty about that decision going forward into the future um, because of a range of reasons, such as changes in science, in the uh, demography or the demographics, population structure, for example, a more youthful or aging population, and economic and political uncertainty. So a decision can be made, but in the future, uh, we're not sure on uh, that decision because there are variables that could change uh, how that decision plays out going forward. So overall here, um, I'm just trying to bring together a path. So this is players. So think as you go through the resource booklet, identify who the players are, uh, how are they influencing the issue? Why are they influencing it in that manner? And do some of these players have more of a role? Are they uh, do they have greater influence and why? And I've put here some players from IGOs, TNCs, national governments, local governments, small private businesses, large private businesses, and pressure groups. On to attitudes. So we've got attitudes and actions. Identify any attitudes in the resource booklet and how might those attitudes be influencing actions within the issue? And what we could be looking for in terms of attitudes are political views, religious views, uh, priority given to profit, history and tradition, and or have we got attitudes towards the environment like they're thinking more sustainably or they're thinking about conservation, ethnicity and gender. And last one, futures and uncertainties. Can we identify the type of decision that has been made? Uh, and why that decision has been made. So it could be business as usual, um, could be that they've made a sustainable decision or a very radical alternative decision. Whatever decision they make, it's gonna have an impact on people in the environment and the economy. Can you identify that? And then whatever decision's been made, the outcome of that decision long-term going forward into the future will be uncertain because of maybe changes in uh, technology and science could be changes in population structure economic changes for example i don't know a recession or maybe political changes changes to uh, the government so uh, an example of this would be over here we've got estimates going forward for um basically climate change global warming so realized temperature rise so this here high estimate would be if um, people and governments 
don't change our current CO2 use. So that would be business as usual. We're just doing the norm. Best estimate here is that sustainable strategies have been introduced. So for example, climate change targets, green targets, um, smart meters and homes, but a radical alternative, so would be the lower estimate. This is where people are radically changing practices, but regardless of which decisions made, it's gonna have an impact on people, the environment, the economy, and it may not long-term um, the decision might be uncertain. Here's an example is that a high estimate will have an impact on the environment because if we keep business as usual, then it's going to impact the environment in terms of greater climate change. Low estimate here, so if we went with a radical alternative and we radically changed our CO2 use, that's going to have an impact on people because they're going to have to change their social behaviour. And it's going to have an impact on the economy because we're going to have to invest major infrastructure into alternative technologies. So how do we be synoptic overall? Well, think about referencing PATH. I'm going to be gone for literally 30 seconds, class, and I'll be back in a second. Quick kiss, quick. Sorry, darling. Okay, back to how to be synoptic. So think about referencing path. Make links between your subject knowledge here. So that is uh, tectonics, water, carbon, globalization, and superpowers. You can use case study knowledge as evidence, but it should be a sentence or two. Snippets, you're not using loads and loads and loads of information. You can bring it in, but just snippets, please. Can you think of any theories and models that you've been taught, such as the PAR pressure and release model? You can bring that in. Global themes, throughout everything that we've done, you can find themes um, that run throughout all topics. So this is our, our tectonics, water, carbon, globalization and superpowers. So for example, global warming regularly comes into all those topics. Urbanization comes into those topics. Globalization runs obviously in globalization, but there's links throughout all topics. There's a you know theme of biodiversity, so the range of animals and plants being in decline. There's links in all topics to that. So can you think about these sort of themes and draw them out? And then any recent events within the news, can you bring that into your answers? because that shows that you're synoptically linking to uh, recent events, which, you know, kind of would look quite impressive to an examiner. Okay, so a couple, four more slides here, just on some basic skills, then we'll start looking at the exam paper. First off, interpreting data tables. So when you get a data table, look for patterns, anomalies, and relationships between the information. Here, I've got information on Angola, Congo, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And I'm looking at the information and I'm trying to draw out uh, relationships, patterns, and trends, and anomalies. So first off, this is population age 0 to 14, and it's all very similar. So there's a relationship, okay? They've all got a youthful population. Going through the information, I can see here in purple, that the DRC overall is the least developed. It's got a trend of having the lowest um, factor on the development indicators provided. It's the least developed country. And I've also drawn out here that Angola, um, whilst the richest, actually has a really high infant mortality rate, like by far the highest. That's an anomaly. Why would that be so large if it's earning so much per person? So when you get data tables, pick them apart, relationships, trends, anomalies. Photographs, okay? Sometimes we get photographs and we don't use them particularly well. And I want you to ask yourself, why have you been given this? 
they've chose that photo it's been chosen on purpose try to tease out why you've been given it i'm looking here i'm looking at the dense vegetation the background the blue skies here it looks rather wet okay so i'm thinking i've got a equatorial climate okay i'm also looking and i can see here that i've got spoil heaps uh, and that this is having an environmental impact so if i'm thinking about path here um i'm thinking about uh, players and attitudes uh, i'm thinking attitudes here this is these aren't people that uh think particularly in terms of environmentally in terms they're not thinking about conserving the rainforest that i can see uh, they're probably not thinking particularly about um conservation here what are they doing then well they are mining okay we've got mining going on it's quite isolated in a rural place and i'm looking at the players here and i'm looking at uh, they're not wearing hard hats uh, or high vis. They're not wearing suitable footwear. Uh, we could have some child labor going on here. This is not advanced machinery. So um, what I'm thinking here is I've got players, which are probably local residents. Um, this is not, in my opinion, some form of TNC. It could be, uh, but you know the equipment doesn't look advanced enough. Uh, in terms of the players, I think they just care about making a profit. So I'm going back to this here, everyone. I'm thinking, you know, what, what their attitudes are. They're probably giving priority to profit. And as a result, there's poor attitudes towards the environment. Why? Well, I'm going back to this data table. And this is probably Congo, the DRC, where very little is being earned. So I'm drawing the resources together that I've been given to paint a picture of the players and their attitudes. Next, maps. If you get a map, can you please look very carefully at the scale? Looking at this, if I didn't look carefully at the scale, I might think Singapore is a large country. Okay, this is all about Singapore. But this is zero to six kilometers, which tells me that Singapore is only 30 kilometers wide. That's tiny. It's a country 30 kilometers. It's more like a city, okay? And then I'm also going to look at it and try to draw out information. So what I'm going to do here, I'm looking what are the general trends here. OK, well, the general trend here is there's a lot of purple. OK, so there's emphasis on industry and business. Um, I'd also see quite a lot of green for a country, which is basically a city. They're obviously putting a lot of emphasis on open space and recreation. Um, I'm also looking at it. I'm thinking they've identified areas where there might be future reclamation. Um, so that might be something that they are concentrating on to increase land space. I'm also thinking, well, if there's going to, there could be pressures in the future on the open space and recreation. And that's about it on this one. Um, although actually, yeah, just point this out. There's no farmland here. Okay. They look at agriculture it's very very limited so again when you get these resources go back to the old t trends evidence anomalies okay here trend a lot of industry okay a lot of residential areas a lot of green space which is interesting but my anomaly here is there's a complete lack of agriculture so where's the food coming from and are we going to have to reclaim land or we're going to end up having to build on this green space? Last one, you might get some views and quotes. So, for example, we've got four votes uh, views here. So I'll be kind of going through this process of what kind of player do I have? What's their agenda? OK, so what's their attitudes back to path? Um, what's informing their attitudes? Do they have bias? Um, and then think to myself, which questions could I be using this as A or three evidencing? Okay, I'm gonna stop there. That was general tips. And now let's start looking at the actual exam paper. So first one, the explain questions. I've got two explain questions here for you. So question one says, explain one reason why many national governments have been keen to join free trade blocks. Other question, explain why the GDP per capita for the Asian free trade bloc may be a misleading statistic. 
They're both worth four marks. Just be careful on explaining questions. This is one reason this isn't. So here you have to take one reason and develop it, okay, to get your four marks. Point, develop, point, develop, point, develop. Over here, it doesn't state one reason. So you can do one point developed, another point developed. If I go back here, I've broken it down for you. So if there's no amount given, it can be point, 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 key phrase, second point, key phrase, third point, key phrase, fourth point, develop it from the beginning. Or, again, if no amount's given, you can get it via a one plus one and then another one plus one. So it's one point developed and then a different point developed, i.e. first point, key phrase, develop point, second point, key phrase, develop point. To just double check the resource. Is it stating one reason, two reasons, not giving you any? Check and apply appropriately. Calculate questions. Make sure you show working out. If it asks for working out, show your working in the space provided. What I'd state here is if you struggle with the maths questions, think is it worth it in terms of time investment or is it going to be a time sink? where you're gonna to spend too much time for only four marks, okay? Where well, you could get those four marks on the 18 and 24 marker. If so, stop, okay? Move on to the other questions, come back to this if you've got time at the end, which you should do, because you should have 12 minutes plus six minutes left over for the three four markers. Okay, exam command words. I've just given you a list here. Pause the video at this point and just have a read of them to double check your understanding of them. And I'm just going to quickly pause here and go back to the resource booklet. And here we go. So back to the resource booklet. Before I have a look at the three higher tariff questions, I just want to have a look at the resource booklet and how we can actually go about applying some of what we've looked at to the resource booklet. So when you get to the resource booklet at the start of the paper, we're gonna spend 15 minutes. And what I would like us to do is to uh, unpick each resource, to annotate each resource. So a couple of ways we can do that. Think path, players, attitudes, futures, uh, future and uncertainties. You could be thinking in terms of your tectonics, water cycle, carbon, uh, globalization, and superpowers. Uh, we could be thinking in terms of T, okay, trends, uh, evidence, anomalies. We could also be thinking uh, social factors, economic, environmental, political, positives, and negatives of each. I'm going to do two of these with you. So let's go through this one. Singapore appears to be one of the 20th century's great success stories. Straight away, I'm thinking, why? In 1967, when it became fully independent. So what I've got here is a bit of information that it's a recent country. Okay, so attitudes, I'm thinking I've got a historical factor here. I'm thinking back to... Back to this spider diagram and I'm thinking that the attitudes of people in Singapore might have been informed by their history and tradition, the history being it's a relatively new country. It became a fully independent when it had a per capita of only $500, okay? On average, that's what people in Singapore earn. That there is an economic minus. With limited space, so I've got environmental negatives here, no natural resources, environmental negative, and hostile neighbours. I'm being told it's had hostile neighbours. Why am I being told that? On purpose. So I'm going to be thinking, again, that the attitudes of people in Singapore, okay, historically might be impacted by their relationships with other countries in the area. But by the 21st century, it was transformed itself into one of the world's most important global cities with fourth largest financial center in the world, Economic Plus, third busiest container port, Economic Plus, 
uh, average growth of over 6% per annum with GDP of 55,000 economic plus. All three of these linked to globalization topic, and it has a very low fertility rate, so population growth depends on in migration. Okay, so global theme here of urbanization. Then I'm gonna look carefully at the map I've been given it, why have I been given it? First off, find Singapore, and I can see I've been given a bunch of countries in Southeast Asia. So these countries are players and they are national governments. And I'm thinking, are these the hostile neighbors? I've also been given the USA, which is interesting because it's not in Southeast Asia. I've got USA and I've got China, and now I'm thinking superpower links here, okay? So as I go through the resources, I'm gonna be thinking back to that and looking for other links to China and the USA and whether they want me to draw out more superpowers knowledge uh, and connect that to these resources. Let's do one more. Okay, on this one here, Again, I could go through path. I could be thinking about social, economic, environmental, political, seep, think about my different topics. But on this one, I'm going to concentrate on using T, okay? Trends, evidence, anomalies. Overall trend is here. I can see that in general, as the GDP decreases, that's my orange arrow, I get an increase in national average salary. So you can see reds going down bars and then the blue bars are going up. So I've got an overall trend that the USA to New Zealand, the majority of countries here have the trend that GDP lowers and national average salary increases. My anomalies are over here. These four are not fitting that pattern here. They've got very high, uh, we'll start with high GDP and that GDP is lowering, but the national average salary doesn't increase in the same overall trend of the USA to New Zealand. And in fact, Hong Kong is very anomalous Okay, there's a massive difference between GDP and national average salary. Why? Why is this? I need to come up with some answers. Well, let's look at the countries. Singapore, uh, Luxembourg, Hong Kong, okay, are small city states. So we've got countries similar to Singapore, no ways in here, okay, not quite the same as Luxembourg, Singapore, and Hong Kong. However, look at the difference between them, okay? So that's uh, the reason that's explained. The reason is that maybe Norway doesn't quite fit the same anomalous trends of Singapore, Hong Kong and Luxembourg because that's a country. These are city state countries. But overall, Norway has a low population. So we've got countries with low populations, countries that are small in space size, uh, i.e. Luxembourg, Singapore and Hong Kong. What I've just done with this resource and this resource do with every resource at the beginning of this exam, okay? Pick them apart, start to make links to PATH, to SEEP, to your uh, tectonics, water, carbon, globalization, superpowers, okay? And if T is appropriate, trends, evidence, anomalies, pick it apart using T. Okay. All right, lastly, to point out here, how do we go about then, once we've picked up all the resources, how are we gonna answer the analysis questions, evaluate and evaluate? So the eight markers, I would like you to follow a two developed points slash paragraph structure. Your first paragraph, follow T, okay? What's the general trend? Give me evidence, lift the evidence from the actual uh, resource, explain that evidence, okay? analyze the evidence and then link back to the questions command words then i want you to link into your second paragraph using an evaluative word okay for example although nevertheless okay and then in your second paragraph follow this the come up with the anomalies or the overall anomaly 
give me the evidence from the resource, that's AO3, explain that, analyze it, link back to the question, okay? Evaluate AE marker, very similar to what we do in paper one and two. Give me the intro. What are your aims? State them succinctly. Which state, which side of the argument you are on, and then how you're going to prove it in a succinct manner. After this, I want you to follow this this structure: one, four, then against, then four, then against, four paragraphs, four against, four against, and you're going to use the P structure that we normally use for paper one and two, but the evidence must be from the resource booklet, must be from the resource booklet. You can, in your analysis, use snippets of case study knowledge where relevant, but you're mainly lifting evidence from the resources and analyzing that evidence. Why have you used the evidence? What does it tell you? How accurate is that evidence? How reliable is that evidence? Conclusion, must do this. If you're running out of time, limit your for and against points, make sure you have a conclusion. Succinctly summarize the evidence you presented for both sides. Make a substantiated judgment to which side of the argument you are on and why. Justify your just decision. That has to happen. After I finish speaking, go to the mark schemes and the PowerPoints below. Read the difference between level three and four. Be clear on what level four expects. Uh, for this, it's level three. For evaluate 24 marker level four. And lastly, 24 marker. Again, same intro. The only difference here is it's four against, four against, four against. Okay, I need another two paragraphs. Same idea in the conclusion. You need to make a substantiated judgment and justify your decision overall. This is three sides of A4. This is four sides of A4. You need extra paper. Get extra paper. Use it. Again, for both the evaluate questions, if you're running out of time, stop where you're at, get a proper paragraph conclusion in. Okay, I'd rather have a for and against and then the conclusion if you're not going to get four against, four against. And if the 24 market, if you're not going to get four against, four against, four against, I'd rather have four against, four against conclusion. Must, must have a conclusion. Saying that, make sure that in between every paragraph, you use evaluative language. So this is what I mean by evaluative language. So use this at the beginning of each of your piece paragraphs, and you've got to use these words in your conclusion on the 18 and 24 market. So between them, however, similarly on balance in conclusion, nevertheless, despite this, the most important point was, the least important point was, even so, alternatively, this shows the examiner you've been evaluative, it allows us to give you level three and level four um, and uh, uh, level three, level four marks. Have a read of this yourselves. Pause it here. This is just trying to show you the difference between level one, level two and level three using the same subject knowledge. Have a read through and just see the difference between them. This is kind of useful uh, to get your head around what. The difference between level one, two, and three is for an eight marker, and also for the 18 markers, uh, 18 marker as well. Have a read um, to help you there. Have a quick read here of the command words difference between assess and evaluate. So you're clear that paper three is all about evaluate. There's no assess like paper one and two. Make sure you know the difference clearly between them. And then just a note here on analyze. And then last thing here, just some help on how to make arguments. The evaluate questions are all about making an argument. So you need to come up with sides of an argument. That's your for and your against. So basic evaluate questions would be something like this, side one versus side two. The costs versus the benefits, advantages versus disadvantages, strengths versus weaknesses. So that could just, these form your, your structure to your evaluate question responses. So you must come up with clear arguments, but obviously embed the argument in the subject knowledge of the question. Sometimes the question tells you explicitly that you need to form a certain argument. Read it, what's it asking you to do? If it isn't that clear, 
then come up with arguments based upon these structures here, these ideas here. More advanced ideas, side one versus side two. What about short term versus long term? Short term impacts, long term impacts, short term benefits, long term benefits. Small scale versus large scale. Does it have an impact just locally or a global impact? Will it help just locally or will it help globally? Will it have just local negative impacts or is it going to have global negative impacts? So use different scales to form your arguments. What about players? Could you take two players and form the argument through the players? Are there players that are getting benefits? Are there players that are getting negatives? Um, can we pick out two players and contrast them? And last one, think about C. Could you compare economic and environmental impacts or economic versus en environmental positives, economic versus environmental negatives, or one, one positive, one negative? What about political versus social? Come up with a clear plan before you start answering the question of how you're going to structure your arguments. Lastly, I've given you this overview. You've got this as a laminate. These are sentence structures to help you with how to form your points, how to explain, how to use your evidence, how to analyze, that's important. Look at my sentence structures on analysis and then also how to link back and see how important each point is. Here I've just put the mark schemes. Can you please have a read of what a level three um, expects and look carefully at this bullet point. And that's why you must look at the analysis sentence structures. Again, level four, Look carefully at this bullet point as well for me, please. It's asking you to be able to make judgments on how valuable and reliable the quantitative and qualitative A or three evidence you provided is. Last thing, and we're done. This is taken directly from uh, the mark scheme, and this is how they are expecting you to use A or three. Figure one shows. Figure two shows, figure three reinforces, figure four suggests, figure three underlines, figure five and six present, figure seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay, over here, figure nine suggests, figure seven and text suggests, figure two and three show. In the analysis eight marker and the evaluate 18 and 24 marker, quote the figures, literally do what they're doing. Say, in figure one, it shows, in figure seven, eight, and nine, it highlights that. I want you to literally quote the figure and quote directly from the figure, okay? Lift it directly, okay? And use the language of in figure. Reference it explicitly so that the examiner is being spoon-fed that you are referring to AO3 to get those 22 AO3 marks. I hope this helps, okay? What I'm going to do is give you time to now go back to the resource booklet and the uh, exam. I want you to practice uh, picking apart the resources like I did with these two, using your five core compulsory topics, PATH, T and C, and then also start having a look through the different questions and plan out, especially the eight markers and the 18 and 24 marker, how would you go about tackling that, referencing the PowerPoint guide that I've been using.